Dan Abbott. I'm making a short video on a couple of special um, considerations on the drawings we're doing of the parts for the caster project in AEDD 170. A couple things I didn't get to in one class. Um, what I'm going to do is start with the wheel and I need to show you how to dimension that five millimeter dimension that you otherwise have difficulty dimensioning. So I'm going to start by going to view layout and then model view and then I can browse to the part or I can go over to the palette on the right hand side, come up here, and then I can, if I, oh, I have it open already, it looks like, do I? I already have it in there, but you can go to the little ellipses, the three dots, and then you can find any part you want. See, let's start with the axle support, because I'm going to show you something on that as well. So when you do that, it, it populates this palette and allows you to bring in individual um, views. If you go through the view layout and go to model view, it'll actually bring in standard three view um, representations, but we don't need to do that for this purpose. So I'll bring in, I'll just make that our front view. Now I'll make that the front view, then this becomes a right side view. Now I have tangent edges turned off automatically. When you do yours, tangent edges are going to be showing. So these things are going to look like this. Over here, it's going to look like this. So with this one, I want to just demonstrate something about tangent edges. One is you do not want to show all these tangent edges. So when you bring this in, you've got to right click, go to tangent edges, and then suppress the tangent edges. And you just do that by picking tangent edges removed, right click, tangent edge, tangent edges removed. Now this presents a, um, something that SolidWorks has difficulty doing. If you take a look at this edge here, it comes down until it's tangent to that arc which means that straight edge stops right about there. If I were to sketch a line that went across from where that line ended right there and I came all the way across, that's how far down that edge should come in order to represent that accurately. Since it doesn't come down there and it won't come down there with solid work in a case like this, what I'm going to have you do is to create a layer. Now, I'll turn off the layer and then turn it back on. If you go up here to the command manager and right click, you can pick toolbars. The layers toolbar is turned off in drawings by default. I always use it and I use it for a number of things, one of which is what we're about to see. So when I make the put the layer toolbar on and come over here, I want you to create a an object layer. Now I've already got one here. We'll delete it just so you can see how to go about doing it. Oop, can't delete it, it's the current layer. Let me do that. Okay, now we'll come down here and delete it. Yes, we do. Okay, so go to new. Just make a layer, give it a name. I'm going to call this OBJ for object. And then make sure that the thickness of that layer is set the same. 0.35 is what I want for the thickness as what your general drawing is. And don't forget, by default, SolidWorks will not give you proper line weights. So by default, you need to go up to options document properties and then go down to line font and then change from 0.25 which is what they have um, what the thickness is set by default for object lines and change it to 0.35 so now I now have a layer called object that allows me to go over um, that little funnel means that I have uh, selection filter on and I must have oh I know I hit it over here when I when I came over to the layer function down here I hit the the, the uh, selection filter um, so now I'm gonna go to the sketch tool while I'm on the object layer and I'm gonna sketch a line that starts at the end of that line and comes all the way down to that center line now it should stop right there now it doesn't necessarily have to go all the way there because that center line is not always something that you can snap to so you can see right here, I'm having trouble getting it to snap there. Oh, there it is. So anyway, but that's exactly where it should go. Now, I don't want that line in there. I just put that in there so that you could see what it is that I have to do in order to make that drawing right. This is now correct, so that should come all the way down. You also have to put center lines and other things here as well. The other thing, though, about for this uh, um, video, I'm going to bring in a view of the wheel. So I'm going to go over little dots, find the wheel, which is right here. Open it up. Now I'm going to start with that view of the wheel right there. What I'm going to do is a half section. To do a half section, I'm going to go over to view layout, 
pick the section tool but up here at the top there are two major buttons section and half section I'm gonna pick the one with the arrows going to the left because that's the line of sight bring this over here like that now a couple of things if you um, use a, an object line showing where a cut would have taken place even though it's not actually cut you have to put in the, the cutting plane line I don't want the cutting plane line I think it gets in the way so I'm getting rid of it however I also now you know delete that center line I'm also now going to right click on that and hide that edge that it got that put in when I do that it automatically puts in a center line which is the proper way to represent below and above above being cut and below being uncut when you have a half section with no cutting plane line however you also need hidden lines below that line so I'm going to come over here I'm going to change to the hidden view now I realize I've got another problem which is you don't show hidden lines in the section portion of the view so I'm going to take that line and I'm going to hide it I'm going to take that line right there I'm going to take that line right there and I'm going to hide it as well now the problem is I've got those two lines to put in there this is just like what happened before with the axle support so I'm again just going to draw a line and when I draw the line, I'm going to have the line go from the end point of that to the end point of this one. And I'm going to go back and do it again. By the way, just the enter key will give me the line command again. Go to the end point of that and the end point of that. Now it looks just exactly the same because the same line weight. Now the issue is placing a dimension. So I'm going to change from the layer that I'm on. In fact, I like having a layer for dimensions. So I'm just going to make a dim layer here. And I'll make that dim layer a different color because I also like to have it a different color. You don't need to do this. You can just let the dimensions go on the standard layer. But I'm going to leave that set to a thin line. So now when I do the dimensioning, it's easy to do the three. From that point to the point right there, just snap it in place and let it go over there. The problem comes when you want to dimension to, hmm, it's not there anymore. That corner that you used when you drew this. So there's a tool called a virtual sharp available in SolidWorks. You know, it's an easy thing to use. You just have to hold the control key down so you can pick two straight edges that would intersect. Pick them both at the same time and make sure they're both highlighted over here. Pick a point and it puts a virtual sharp on the drawing. And I do that while I'm in the dimension layer so that it comes in thin. Those are called witness marks. It is possible if you go to options and the document properties under virtual sharps to pick something else. That is, however, what the ASME standard calls for in a situation like that. It's also what most um, architects use. So I don't want you using any of these others. I want you to use the actual witness marks the way they show up. Now when I do a dimension, it goes from here and I have to highlight that. I have to hover over till it turns orange to make sure I've selected it. Bring that over here looks like that oh sorry I hit my escape key by accident but I want to show you I've got to bring something over you get this little message saying do you want to make this driven it's because we're dimensioning actual geometry and the fact that we're dimensioning the geometry um, from one to the other I guess is why it does that but we're going to just say yes we want it driven we don't want it driving In other words, I don't want that dimension to determine the actual size of that now it comes in like that. Uh, here's a case where SolidWorks gets a little too aggressive about sticking things outside. There's no reason why that 5 shouldn't be inside. First thing is to go outside of a dimension if there's not enough room in the arrowheads. The dimension itself, the number stays in there until it's not enough room for it. And since the height of that should be 3, although I'm not sure what it is right now, the default, let's go over to Document Properties and under Document Properties Dimensions, look at the font. Yeah, the default weirdly is 3.175, which is the actual conversion from an eighth of an inch. We don't need that. Same thing over here with the arrowhead size. That should also be three millimeters. So that makes the dimensioning a little easier because of the, you know, the size is a little bit smaller. And the last thing is this. You do not want an extension line to go through an arrowhead. That's pro prohibited by the ASME standard. I'm going to select the dimension that has the line that goes through it 
And over here on the left hand side under properties, I am going to select oh, the leaders tab. And once I get the leaders tab, I'm going to say break the line. When I pick break the line, which should be the default, but it isn't it will now break around that arrowhead, which is exactly what you want it to look like. 